G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, as you saw in the last few videos, I'm pushing on with this new LPG furnace I'm making out of a recycled 10kg LPG gas cylinder. So I've got that bit done, well nearly done. I've still got to put the vent pipe in, yeah, uh, the um, burner pipe in it. And I'm going to put that in on an angle so I'll get that swirl effect. Now the comments have been good, I mean, they're getting a lot of good feedback and I'm just, uh, you know, playing it by ear, see what people think and uh, I don't profess to know anything more than average about these things and yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to get any help I can. So yeah, we're going to do that. And then I also I mentioned about the paint, the old paint, I'm going to have to take that off somehow because I think the heat's going to take a, you know, a toll on it. And John from uh, his channel said, why don't you, when you get it all welded up, before you put the insulation in it, put the burner in it and heat it up and that will just burn the paint off. And I thought, yeah, what a good idea. So I'm going to do that. I'll weld everything up, get it all complete before I um, put the perlite in. And that's going to damage the paint anyway when I'm welding on it. So, yeah, then I'll just fire up the burner and it should just take the paint off and then I'll just have to wire buff it over and put on some heat proof paint. That's the plan there. So yep. Okay, let's look at the lid. Now with the lid I got the vent in as you saw and I was going to put some mesh in here to stop the insulation material from falling out which can happen apparently. And it was going to be a bit of a fiddly job you know you have to tack every bloody bit of mesh end that comes into contact here and also here. And then one of the viewers said, well, why don't you just use a bit of Rio? And I thought, yeah, that's a good idea. And I had a whole heap of really small diameter Rio at the back of the shed and it sat there for years and years and years. And finally I had to clean up one day and I took it down to the recycle man. I thought, I'll never use this. It just shows you. Now I want it. Anyway, I did have some other stuff, which is just slightly bigger, probably probably half as big again as what I had and that should be good enough so I'll, I reckon I'll just weld in a couple of bits like one there one there maybe bring a cross piece across I've got enough to do it and then it's just a matter of just weld on here I don't have to weld on the centre vent which is powder coated so cleaning that up and yeah, that should do the job good. So I'll, when I do that, I'll bring that level with the surface so that there's no uh, perlite on the outside of this because if there was, I think it would probably fall, fall off. So yeah, if we bring this so it's just level, well then the perlite will only sort of come to sort of about here on it. And that should be good and heat resistant. So yeah, this shows you. So yeah, once again, thanks guys for the comments. It's been really helpful. So that's what we're going to do now. And uh, yeah, so once I've got this this job done, well then I'll put the I'll put the burner tube in. And uh, yeah, we're well on the way then. Well, we're getting there. The lid fits pretty evenly all the way around. I can probably get a bit neater finish, but that's not too bad. And I've Put some rebar inside the the lid. There you go. That'll do it. That'll keep this stuff in place, stop it falling out. It's not my best welding, but I didn't use I sort of use low hydrogen rods on this stuff as crap to weld with GP rods, but good enough, most of it will be hidden anyway. Yeah, it's not going to be a thing of beauty, so yes, yeah, so I will bring the 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 um, the gooby goo, the insulation mix level with the the rim, so you only see just the very outside edge of the of the rebar, and uh, yeah, it's come up okay. I did think about putting cross pieces in, but not much point. I think it'll be plenty. Plenty good enough with just those two bits. I don't want to make it too heavy. And uh, yeah. 
So that's all good. So the next part is to cut a hole in here and then uh, put in the, the port for the burner. So I can, I can work with that pretty well because the flare pot will sit in and now I know exactly where the, where the burner's got to be pointing. And uh, yeah, I cut that, fit it, weld it up in, inside once again. And then it's uh, a matter of like the, put some hinges on a pin or something, a pin for the lid. So we, you know, we're getting on with it. It's, it's not a massive job, it's just time consuming, you know. And uh, we're making it out of junk, so it's not exactly high class metal or anything. So, um, yeah. Anyway, we're getting there. Cutting the hole in the tank to uh, feed the burner pipe in is a bit difficult. This is pretty hard stuff. I tried using the, I drilled a hole and then tried using the jigsaw and it hardly would look at it. So I'm going to have to drill it, drill all the way around like I've done with pilot holes. And then use bigger drills, open them up and then basically get it out that way and then clean it up with the die grinder or a grindstone and uh, get it to size but yeah it won't go on the drill press it's too big and uh, so I just, just used my big old two speed drill on slow speed and yeah, it went through okay so now we'll just open them up when you do this sort of job drill at low speed you don't want a high speed drill and uh, a lot of the actual dedicated electric drills that are made for purely metal drilling peak out at about 900 RPM, like not very fast at all. This big old uh, Atlas Copco job, I've had this for a while and uh, this is a grunty machine, this will do it nicely. smaller drill that one's a bit closer to the edge. And here's a tip for you, when you put drills in chucks, don't push them right in, that's wrong. The shank is made long enough that you only use half of it, just enough. And you think, well why is the rest of it there? Well that's there so that it allows the drill to, to flex a bit. If it tries to flex on the flutes, because all of it's in the in the chuck, it will snap the drill. So you always, always only ever put them in no more than that halfway. That's plenty. The depth of the jaws on the chuck probably give you a good indication anyway. But uh, it's no good just pushing it right back into the body of the chuck. It's, that's pointless, and it's plain wrong. Okay.
Hmm, that's catching. I think I might use the cutoff disc on it. This friction discs. Don't want to go bending my my burr or damaging my grinder. So yeah, well that I'll use a hacksaw on it. Yep. Is that these things are magic? Okay, well, that's about it for today. I think I've got the, the bit out now. We just have to grind it back. I'll probably use a grindstone because that way you've got a bigger curvature than a, than a burr, won't jump around so much. The danger with burrs, they can easily catch in a hole and run around the inside, and then they can bend themselves or break. You've really got to be careful using burrs, but that a small grindstone will do that, and we'll just grind it out until it's a snug fit. But that's how you do it. Okay, that's it for today. Must be time for a beer. I'll see you next time. Cheers.